Normally this spot's filled with Rocky Mountain sh sheep, but not today. Maybe because it's warming up, melting out, and they're moving higher. But I'm out at the Elk Refuge and getting an awesome zone two, zone three day in, seven miles on the road. And uh, again, with the anticipation of trails opening up next week. You can, uh, out in the distance there, that's Snow King Mountain. That's the, that's the ski town, or the, the ski hill in town uh, with lots of vertical and where a lot of the early season Olympic training teams come to train on because we get snow early and it's um, the, the <clears throat> the grade is is really really steep and good for for racing so all right so up to this point i've done a lot of videos on primarily run form run strength kind of encompassing this larger umbrella of what i call strength running and what i want to talk about today is how we can incorporate the shoes as part of a strength tool to start meshing shoes, foot strength, run form, and run strength training, a la some of the drills that I've been posting, um, as a package to create this ultimate foundation for yourself as a runner. Again, I'm always meshing performance and longevity and health. Okay, and those always go hand in hand with me. It's not just, hey, we're doing this for to perform. You're a competitive racer. This is why we're doing it. Yes, that's why we're doing it. But also for those of you who are looking for longevity, health, fitness, and having a good feeling body and being able to run more, all of this applies. Okay. So for those of you who attend my camps, you understand how important it is for us to incorporate foot strength and our shoe choice and our run form all together to accomplish what we're looking for to accomplish with all of this. For those of you who have my book, you understand all the chapters that dive into all this and you also know how important I feel foot strength is and how we train the feet, how we use the foot, whether it's striking the ground with our run form or just as importantly and more potently with training the feet, how we train the feet dictate how we use our body up through our hips as runners. Okay, so again, that encompasses how we strike the ground, how we're using our feet as we strike the ground, and the, the specific run, I, say, I should say that the specific foot strength exercises all go into creating what I call equilibrium within the body and using our body in a proper biomechanical fashion and utilizing, firing, activating muscles in a proper fashion that all go into creating that equilibrium, takes away all the, the tightness that we have as runners or been brainwashed to think that we have to be tight for. And now I wanna kind of dive into a little bit of how our shoe choice affects this and then let this then springboard into some some of the shoes that I choose in later videos and doing some shoe reviews that I know you guys are interested in. So um, I am in the, still testing out the Arcteryx Norvan SL. And this is gonna be one of those runs where it's do as I say, not as I do. This is a seven mil drop. And typically what I wanna start out with is that we want to be able to run in a, the most minimal shoe possible the majority of the time. So what we do the majority of the time matters most. It's just like in training, consistency, okay? The more we run, the more frequent we run, the better we run most of the time, the more that's gonna benefit, benefit us for the long haul, okay? And that's with shoes, okay? So I, I try to, especially during the week, run in the most minimal shoe I can, primarily a zero drop, which is the difference between the heel height and the forefoot height. So a zero drop would have no differential or a, a four mil drop, which where the heel would be four, four millimeters a little bit higher than the forefoot. And again, these are seven, okay? 
And I'm again, if you've watched some of my other videos, I'm testing these out for another purpose. So um, this again, do as I say, not as I do today. But typically on a run like today, nice easy zone two, I'm in a zero drop shoe, strengthening my feet, strengthening my run form, and strengthening my body with the proper shoe that I pick while I'm out running. Okay, so I'm while I'm out running, this natural flexible shoe is allowing my foot to act naturally so I can engage my arch, my big toe, which is our first line of stability, which then affects how we stabilize the knee, which then affects how we utilize and activate our glute. And that's the vicious cycle. That's what we want, okay? So most of the time, I am in a zero drop shoe or a four mil drop based on the type of terrain I'm on. And that's typically what I do most of the time. And so through all of this, again, with strength training, training into feet, run form, proper shoes, I've developed a very, very strong structural system that allows me to be able to run in these shoes. Okay, but the point of this video is just kind of setting the course, setting the foundation of how and why we should maybe start looking at our shoes as a, as a strength tool. Okay, so the, the more minimal shoe we use, the more we're able to have a feel of the ground and more importantly, have stability within our feet as we run. And that creates strength training. Okay, so first and foremost, the, the shoe you pick is gonna dictate how well you use your feet. And that's the point of this video, is that the more minimal the shoe, the more flexible the shoe, the more easily you're gonna be able to engage your feet to use your feet as stability for proper strength training. Okay, so now let's take that to why I'm using this shoe today. I'm experimenting with this, using this shoe for what I again call an all day shoe. And most, most runner, every, where, the, where this gets tricky is every runner is different. There's runners out there who run 10 miles a week. I have runners who run almost 100 miles a week and anywhere in between. So everybody's different based on what their goals are and everybody's strength's different, okay? So that's where this is just kind of a general overall philosophy for then you to pick and choose how this applies to you based on your goals, based on your distances, based on your training. So getting back to these shoes, the reason I'm using this seven mil drop is I want a lightweight shoe and these shoes are super, super lightweight. One of the lightest shoes I've ever put on for trail. And with my strength that I've developed over 30 some years of doing this, that I am then able to maybe use a shoe like this that allows me to be out all day maybe do a 200 mile race without getting a lot of foot fatigue, which kind of comes as, you know, I, I to back up a little bit. I can run in my four mil shoes almost all day, but they're starting to change. The manufacturer's starting to change how these shoes are built. So I'm finding that they're getting stripped down a little bit and I'm struggling with an all day shoe from a four mil or zero drop. Okay, which leads me into the dichotomy of all of this is that what I'm finding is that it's better to have maybe a little bit of a drop, but with lower stack height. What I mean by stack height is how high the shoe is, the thickness of the shoe. I am finding that it's better to have a lower stack height with a little bit of, of drop height, like these shoes I have on today, the, the stack height is 14 millimeters, okay? Not very, not very high, but they, how they've designed the midsole, there's enough cushion that allows me to possibly be able to go into this all day. It works really naturally. It's very flexible. What I have to give up is a little bit of a drop, but that gives me a little bit of a reprieve with my feet as I'm out all day. They just don't fatigue as much. Going back to what's most important, what I do most of the time. I'm not always gonna be running in these shoes. Like I said, most 95% of my runs are in zero drop, four mil drop, very minimal shoes. 
very natural, okay? So where I'm going with this is that now we can find these huge height built cushion shoes that could be four mil drop or even zero drop. That on paper, maybe that's what we might think is all we need to be concerned about. But with these really thick soled midsoles, okay, the higher the shoe gets, the more top heavy it gets, the more cushion you have, the more you lose stability. So you might be in a four mil drop or even a zero drop shoe, but with 25 millimeters of stack height, and you're losing all proprioception, all stability with your feet, and you're not using your feet. And all this torque then of this being top heavy and getting tossed around goes to your knee, goes to your hip, and causes the, the dysfunction that we don't want. Okay, so that's where this gets tricky is that you can't always look at just if it's zero drop or a low drop, you have to also look at the stack height, okay, and the flexibility of it. How well does it, is the rigidity laterally for you to allow your foot to work naturally, okay? So I could go on all, all day about this, but I wanted to kind of lay a foundation to refer people to so when I start talking about shoes, they can refer to this video to get a backdrop of my philosophy, okay? So start again, it's what you do most of the time from run form, run foot strength, drills, strength running, and shoe choice, okay? So I'm sure you're gonna have a ton of questions with it. I'm gonna leave it there so we can start diving into some of your questions and start experimenting and start looking at your, your quiver of shoes. And if you're able to, from a budgetary standpoint, I would really recommend you start to look at having a few different shoes in your repertoire based on the type of running you're doing that today, okay? Okay, I, I have, I'm fortunate enough, I've been able to get shoes for a variety of ways and I have shoes everywhere and uh, it's a source of marital tension, but um, I'm able to pick a lot of different shoes based on the type of terrain that I'm running on. And that's another thing that, Maybe I'll finish with this is that when I'm on trail, another part of my choice in shoes is protection. And protection is much more important than cushion because now we continue to have that stability, but I need protection for pointy, hard, sharp rocks in the Alpine versus today on a dirt road. And I have, I need different different types of shoes, different types of protection based on the type of terrain I'm running. Okay, so a shoe that might be a four mil mountain shoe, I would pick for the mountains, but I wouldn't pick today because it's too much protection for today. Okay, all right, I go on. So anyways, um, yeah, so send questions again. Hopefully I, I want this to actually maybe spur questions rather than continuing to go on and on and on, which I could. So um, send your questions and let's dive into this. And as I get into testing more shoes, I'll be able to start getting some pump, some reviews out for you guys. So, all right. Thanks as always for watching, stay healthy, strong, and we'll see you next time as always. Okay. So I mentioned back there that typically there's mountain, mountain goat, mountain sheep in this area. Well, we've got some right by the road here and I'm just going to kind of cruise by and Give you guys a, a look. There's three right here by the road. This is what you would call a ram. Rocky Mountain sheep. And then there's some way in the background. So I know the light's not great. Right into the sun. But they're just staring at me. And you. Just watching me run by. Maybe they're jealous because I'm running. And again, we're just gonna kind of let them be, just be natural. And then there's a whole herd over here in, in the hills that you can't see. Pretty cool as always, but since I've got the camera back on, I wanna say, kind of talking more about, everybody's a little different, um, getting back to the shoe thing. I have an athlete who did Tour of Giants, which is a, over a 200 mile race in the Alps of Switzerland, France over a hundred thousand feet of climbing 
all mountainous and she ran in a four mil drop shoe with adequate protection for her. And she's been doing this system for almost 15 years now. So she's got the foot strength, she's got the run form. We've dialed this for her and she's able to run in a shoe that allows her to be nimble and her, she just picked the proper protection for the type of terrain okay so that's where I start to see this as just a lifelong journey in developing better and better strength all right i'm out